sure. <clears throat> Before I begin, I do want to thank everybody that came out tonight. That uh, was a fantastic crowd. They were very involved in the game. Um, active participants in helping us win the football game, and, and our team and our staff's very appreciative of that. Um, and we played pretty well today against a, a big, tough, physical Boston College team. Uh, obviously, we did a better job, not perfect, but a better job of taking care of the football. Um, we didn't eliminate all mistakes, but uh, for one week, we were a more disciplined football team. We've got to continue to improve in that manner in order to give ourselves a chance in the future. But I'm awfully happy and grateful to get the win. Coach, uh, Coach uh, how pleased were you defensively? With Obviously, you guys were able to shut them out and keep them from doing basically anything all game. Uh, how happy were you with that effort? Uh, pretty pleased. I mean, we're getting the ball back pretty quickly, sometimes on short fields. They played good, smart football, and uh, you know we felt like they were going to try and get big on us and try and run the ball and kind of force feed the run game, and uh, we had to be able to to handle that and then not give up big plays. You know, a lot of times you'll see teams uh, dedicate people to the to the box and uh, in turn give up big plays in the passing game. We were to lim able to eliminate both of those. Where is Gerard right now in, in his development in your offense? I mean, he's obviously putting up very good numbers. Oh, you know, I don't know. What, I don't pay too much attention to the numbers. I pay more attention to the to the grade sheet in terms of uh, our decisions on a on a play by play basis. Uh, certainly made some good things or made some good plays out there um, and missed a few. So uh, I will say this. Every week he seems to, or at least the last three weeks, he's approached it with a great mindset. It is obviously incredibly important to him to play well. You can see that by his preparation. Uh, he is a good listener uh, and tries to do what we're asking him to do. And at, at times uh, he does it on a fairly consistent basis. Coach, you guys talked a lot about after the battle at Bristol that you guys just didn't have that great of a week of practice. How much better do you feel like this week of practice was compared to last week? I liked our Tuesday uh, of this week much better than our Tuesday of last week. Um, you know, as a, tried to shorten up Wednesday just a little bit for them, but uh, we, we are still figuring those things out. So it, it, because we won one football game doesn't mean that that we can rest on our laurels, laurels in terms of being a, a team that prepares every week. But uh, it was a step in the right direction. Paul. Coach, uh, in the first quarter there, Clark forced a fumble. You guys recovered, and it led to a touchdown. That seems to sort of spark everything. Did, you, did it look that feel that way to you? Well, it, it kind of all runs together to me um, during the game. Um, I, do, I do know this. We felt like yards were going to be very difficult to come by coming into this game. This team was giving up 12 points a game on defense this year. Last year, they gave up just over 15 points a game. Um, so we felt like any time we could get a turnover and get a short field, we needed to do a great job capitalizing on it. And the, and the kids, I kind of felt that momentum. And uh, we were able to get things kind of kicked off. Coach, did you feel like if you had eliminated the mistakes that you were capable of a performance like this, or are even you a little surprised at how thorough you were able to, to win this game today? Well, I, I think if we eliminate mistakes and stay healthy then and do a great job preparing and all the things that good teams do on a daily basis, then we'll have that opportunity. You know, my, my only caution to, to our kids is, is you have to do it every single day. So... You know, do we have a chance to play well on Saturdays, uh, regardless of the opponent? Absolutely, and, and that doesn't mean we'll win every game, but it, but it's up to us to make sure we give ourselves that opportunity. And we gave ourselves that opportunity this week, and in turn, um, got some good results. Justin, you've now won both games that you were supposed to win pretty much. Where does this game put you in terms of progress where you want to be for the entire season if you're on track? And can you kind of adequately measure that progress in such a lopsided game? I don't know. You know, I, 
the, the, what the game, what the win means is we're 1 0 this week. Uh, we won our first conference game. We've got a great challenge uh, coming up with, with East Carolina this week, a team that's, um, I don't want to say had our number, but the last two games they've, they beat Virginia Tech. Um, and we're going to have to get ready to go to go play them. So where we're at in terms of our development is a daily thing. You know, I, I think it's important that we take it one day at a time. We don't overreact to the bad or the good. We continue to teach and focus on the task at hand and the preparation model that we have and try and perfect that the best we can. Justin, you mentioned how effective BC had been defensively over the last season in this that was especially true against the rush. No one had run for more than 155 against them. You go for two something today. What made your running game so effective? Well, I think part of it was that we we they got a little tired. You know, I I don't know what the statistics are just throughout the game in terms of our rushing yards. I felt like during the game it was very difficult to run the ball early. We we had a couple things schemed up and got some decent runs, but. Uh, as the game wore on, you know, I felt like we, um, you know, they played a lot of snaps. I don't know how many, but it seemed like they were on the field quite a bit. Their offense couldn't stay on the field, and it kind of kind of worn down a little bit. And then we made some plays in their run defense. We made some plays versus man coverage where they load the box, which um, helped it when they got to – they mixed in a little bit of too high, which let us pop a few runs in there too, which certainly helped. Justin, you said you're more interested in grades than numbers where Gerard is concerned. But doesn't it speak kind of to me, does it speak to your preference that you, that he's throwing 10 touchdown passes and, or, and that's the way you guys are mostly putting the ball in the end zone or is that just how it's worked out? No, I don't, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I just want to try and win the game. You know, if it's a pass or a run, it really doesn't bother me one way or the other. Um, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't have a preference. I believe in, in in running an offensive system that fits your kids, and that's what we're trying to do weekly, um, and taking what the defense gives you. So, if they load the box, we, we got to be able to make plays on the perimeter, and if they don't, we got to be able to run the ball on the inside. So, um, that just seems to be how they've come the first couple of weeks. It could, as long as we're getting them, I'm all right. Coach, uh, how big of an impact do you think? Um, how big of an impact do you think uh, the familiarity with Scott Leffler's offense had for your defensive success today? Yeah, I'm sure, you know, that was a two-way street, I'm sure. Uh, Scott, having gone against uh, Bud every day in practice for however many years he was here, um, you know, so I think that kind of goes, goes both ways. I don't know if there was a huge advantage one way or the other in terms of familiarity. You know, but ultimately, um, obviously, we did a good job on defense and kept the ball in front of us and, and limited the run game. You got your first look at Marshawn Williams out there in the game. How do you think he did his first action? I liked him. You know, I like his demeanor during the game. You know, he's he's uh, serious but relaxed, and uh, I've, I've I've enjoyed him in practice through two a days. I was I was excited uh, about him. He is a big physical kid. And, and an intelligent kid that uh, picks things up quick and, and sees what's going on. And uh, I enjoyed having him out there. I'm glad he's back. Jack, Jack Click is a local kid for us, a small role today. But what has he been like to coach uh, in practice? What kind of a worker is he? Oh, he's a great kid. Um, you know, he's great with uh, kids in town. You know, my kids like him. You know, he's over the house. He sits down and plays with the girls. He's a lot of fun to be around. He's a good worker. This this program and this football team is important to him. That's obvious. Um, and I thought it was a nice reward. You know, Brendan came in there and played well and scored, and we were going to run the quarterback a little bit. I felt like, uh, or we felt like on offense, it would be nice to, to, to reward Jack by letting him get in there when um, there at the end, and he did a good job. Coach, what did you see on the targeting call there on Gaines on that block? Yeah, that's the that's the rule. You know, I it's it's one of those deals. Every now and again, you get um, one of those plays that uh, there's really not anything you can tell your own player. You know, he's not allowed to block low. So I thought it was obvious that he was 
was not trying to hit the kid in, in the head. Um, but it's one of those plays, and I've had a couple of them in my career where um, there's really not a lot to, to be, that you can be, you can be upset with him about because uh, it obviously wasn't intentional. He tried to hit the kid right in the, I think the initial contact, and I haven't seen the replay like y'all have, but it seemed to me that the initial contact was with the shoulder, on the shoulder, and then his, then his head did hit him, and that's, that's the rule. And, you know, we're legislating safety out there, and I understand that. And, but when you do that, there are going to be some repercu unintended repercussions. And, you know, I don't, there's not really much else you can, you can say about it. All right. Thank you, Coach. You bet. Coach Foster up next. But just how happy were you overall with your defense's ability to first stop the run and kind of match that physical style you talked about? Well, that was the key. Um, we felt, you know, obviously have utmost respect for BC and how they how physical they play. And I thought that was going to be the key either way, how we control the ball offensively up front and, and how we control the line scrimmage defensively. And uh, I was really proud of our kids' effort that way. I thought we had a great week of practice. Um, you know, I, I, as we talked earlier in the week, you know, you take five plays out of last week, we really played with this kind of effort and this kind of, and we were just more consistently good uh, as far as our discipline, staying at home, doing the right thing, and, and uh, I was really proud of that. You know, uh, just uh, my hat's off to our kids. They worked really, really hard. They bounced around this week, and uh, our scout team kids gave us a great look. And, um, you know, in, in the, in, at the end, those good habits, good things happen in, in the result of that. So I'm really proud of that. Coach, how big did you think that uh, the fumble Ch Chuck Clark forced there at the, in the first quarter that led to your touchdown was? Well, that was real big, obviously. Uh, they just come off of returning a kick for a touchdown and got called back. And then, um, you know, us to create a play that early in the game and get the momentum going right now and then us, you know, turn around and score, that's obviously uh, a big, big uh, play in the game and, and sets the tone for the game. And, uh, um, you know, Chuck's a good football player. And I like the way our kids are playing right now. We, you know, as we talked in this offseason, trying to get more eyes on the ball, and we've been able to do that. And I like how we're fitting. They're, they're confident in their guy around them, and, and we're playing fast. And, and that's, uh, you know, I hope it's just the start of good things to come still. But that was obviously a big play in the game, and, and uh, um, you know, and, and, and by a good player. But a couple questions. Uh, first, now that you have hindsight, how much did familiarity with, with what Scott likes to do play a role? And second, when you guys get into the fourth quarter and, and they've got a donut up there, do you guys start talking about finishing off the shutout? Is that important to you at that point? Is it something you bring up to them, or does somebody bring it up? Yeah, let's finish with the first one. I like the last point, the last comment, and I like the donuts. You know, that's the, those are hard to come by. But um, you know, I told the kids when they're going in, we weren't just finishing the game. You know, we're at thin at some spots, and I want to make sure those guys want to go in and perform and execute and just how they practice. Not Because, there are, you know, some of those guys were a play away from us and those guys figuring in more consistently and, and, and having to perform and uh, if we were to have an injury and that type of thing arise. But uh, I was proud how they stepped up. We had a couple of young guys. Uh, Tavante Beckett showed up a couple times tonight that he didn't do a week ago, and, and that was encouraging. Uh, along, we see little Curtis Williams was a guy that made a couple nice plays, and uh, so that's that's good to see some guys take that next step because again, they're 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 a play away. And and I tell you, I tell you what, uh, shutouts are hard to come by. I don't care who you're playing against, and uh, that's something really really proud of for our kids and happy for our kids. You know, the familiarity with uh, Lefty probably more so in the passing game. I mean, their run game, uh, they did a couple things early that they had not shown quarterback runs, quarterback counters, and things that everybody's trying to do. And I like this. That goes back to us having more eyes on the ball and having our proper fits and that type of thing, spilling the ball and making it bounce and uh, to a free hitter. But it, where it really came into more in play was the passing game. And, um, you know, I, I just kind of got his gear of what he was doing by splits and things of that nature. And we tried to mix up our coverages as far as some zone, he was running mesh routes, and then we were playing some man off of it, too. When Adonis got his pick, we were in man free. Um, and then, um, you know, they ran through a really nice play. They dropped one, you know. Um, sometimes you got to have good luck. 
you know, after the turnover. Um, they did a nice job of blocking our edge guy and blocking, blocking, and our, our corner was filling, you know, where he needs to fit in the run game, and then he slipped. Luckily, um, you know, sometimes it, it takes some, some luck as opposed to, uh, uh, you know, just technique. But uh, that's good for us to learn. We can, we can teach off of that right there. But really happy for our kids, proud of our kids. Played extremely hard. This guy's been a, really proud of our seniors. They've been great leaders for us. Got a great group of seniors. And really happy for them and, and proud of them and proud of their leadership. Coach, you mentioned earlier this week the importance of having good production out of the whip position against BC with them playing more backs and more tight ends. How do you think Mook and Anthony Chicago played today? Um, looked like they played pretty well. I know Mook missed a tackle. Uh, I think he dropped two interceptions. They, uh, they converted four first downs. One was the first third down of the game. One was a quarterback scrambled. And the other two, if I'm not mistaken, went right through our hands into their hands in both instances were Mook. And he wasn't happy with that. But, uh, you know, I like the way he's, a, he's got a, a knack of being around the football and, and – being a playmaker, and Anthony's the same way. You know, Mook's got a little bit more coverage uh, abilities and, and playing in space as opposed to Anthony, but uh, both are really quality football players and guys that I, I really like at that position because Mook can give us that versatility with the nickel package, but Anthony gives us that versatility with, uh, you know, heavier personnel. And then also in our 30 package, he does a nice job as that what we call our bandit position and, and does a great job at that spot. So I like the play of both those guys right now. Thank you.